to worship you I live to worship you I live I live to worship you oh Jesus oh Lord just to worship you I live just to worship you I live I live to worship you oh oh
thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Jesus, it's all about you, Lord. It's all about you. It's all about you. It's all about you, Lord. It's all about you. Oh, it's all. As the song said, it's all about Jesus. I know many times that we forget that it is never about us, all about Jesus. I forget sometimes. Sometimes I believe that, you know, the world revolves around me, but it's not about me, it's not about you, it's all about Jesus. And I just want us to remember that this morning. So when we are asked to do something, Help us to remember it's not about us. Even though when we don't feel like doing it. Help us to remember that it's all about Jesus. It's all about Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. My God is awesome. He can move mountains. He is a valley.
Thank you, Jesus. So praise the Lord, everybody. At this time, I'm going to invite Sister Paulette Malcolm to come to do the opening prayer. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise God. At this time, we're going to pray for our praise God. Beverly Simit, physical need. Prayer for our Shanice Parkins, Patrickson, physical needs. Prayer for our Selena Low, special need. And also, Brother Henry, praise God, and the Williams family, praise God. Praise God. And if there's any other need, that you need to be prayed for, you can just indicate at this time. Praise the Lord. Praise God. We're all going to ask everyone to stand as we intercede in prayer at this time. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Praise God. As we sing this one verse of this song this morning. I need the every heart, most foolish, just Lord, Lord, like So I know Raka Lottin in the hospital. Praise God. But our God is able this morning. Thank you, Jesus. There is nothing that seems impossible for God. Praise God. And so as we come together at this time and we are going to pray and to believe God this morning that nothing is impossible. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Most righteous and eternal Father. Lord Jesus, we come before you. You is our holy God, we know this morning. There are many gods, Lord Jesus, but you are the true and living God. And so God, as we bow before you this morning, you already heard all the needs, Lord Jesus, of your people this morning. Lord, many are sick and afflicted this morning, Jesus. But God, you said many are the affliction of the righteous, and the Lord will deliver them out of them all this morning. Lord Jesus, there is nothing too hard that you cannot do. And so, Lord, we lift them up to you this morning, Jesus. Many of may be laying upon the bed of affliction this morning. But God, I pray you give them strength upon the bed of languishing. Oh God, as we look to you this morning, Jesus. Oh God, as they cry out to you this morning. Lord Jesus, you know their situation. You know what they are going through, Lord Jesus. Because you were in the flesh as we are. Oh God, and you have been touched by the feeling of their infirmities this morning. And so God, I pray this morning that you will touch them from the crown of their head and to the sole of their feet Lord Jesus mighty God touch your medication if there is any they have to take in this morning I pray this morning God as they lift it to their mouth oh God by faith this morning Lord Jesus you can speak to that body in the name of Jesus this morning and said made whole in the name of Jesus mighty God we believe you this morning at your word because God you 
you honor your word above your name this morning and we place it before you Jesus because this is the confidence we have in you this morning that whatsoever we have according to his will you hear at us this morning Jesus and so God we believe your word in the name of Jesus Christ this morning we pray for the Williams family oh God this morning Jesus you know what you're going through mighty God and so this morning I pray you give them the strength oh God even know Jesus because your strength make them perfect in your weakness mighty God help them to understand that oh God you will never leave them nor forsake them you said in the valley you restore their soul and so God we believe your word this morning Jesus help them to understand God that you are dear with them Jesus you may not dear oh God when you want them when you want you Lord but Lord you will be there on time Lord Jesus provide for them heal your mind physically spiritually and emotionally this morning Jesus because at the end of it God we can say it is well oh God almighty as we look to you Lord Jesus I pray this morning oh God for the Henry family this morning Lord Jesus you know your situation oh God I pray for sister Henry Lord oh God with that fit foot Lord that is soul and mighty God I pray for healing this morning Jesus you are the bomb in Gideon you are the doctors of all doctors you are the healer of all healer Lord Jesus and so God we place her before you at times God she will only go God even when the foot is on her oh God she will still Lord God press on but this morning Jesus no one know but you know all things this morning and so God I place her at your throne in the name of Jesus this morning mighty God we believe your word and we know God you hear and you answer us prayer this morning Lord Jesus this morning we are praying this morning God almighty for the leaders mighty God even of this assembly God we pray for each and every one of us God that is called by your name Jesus we are depending on you oh God because we can't do it without you I pray for the strength of your leaders God you know what many of us is going through a time oh God is only you see Lord God in that secret part you said you know what don't sit in an uprising you see the thoughts are far off this morning and so God I pray for your strength as we lift them up to you this morning Jesus mighty God cover them under your blood this morning as we look to you Lord Jesus because there are so many things that's happening in our world and so many things to distract your people but oh God help us to keep the focus and to focus on you Jesus because we see that the coming of the Lord is near and the more you get close to us Lord Jesus help us not to detour mighty God but to look to the hills from whence coming to our help because our help coming from the Lord which make heaven and earth mighty God Lord Jesus we pray for our young people this morning we pray for their strength this morning Jesus oh God to run this race Lord God because we all run in a race this morning and you said we must run it with patience Lord Jesus oh God Almighty help them this morning because God if we are so many God so much old mighty God in this service mighty God for such a time and oh God they are here Lord Jesus oh God we need no God for them to get strengthened for the race Lord Jesus and it's only oh God they can get strengthened it's oh God to pray oh God and to fast and to read the word oh God to keep them going Lord Jesus mighty God I place them under the blood this morning and all our children this morning Jesus I pray for those that are in school mighty God even though Lord Jesus I pray for their strength and their struggling but in the name of Jesus Christ we see where the enemy want to take them down but in the name of Jesus this morning we are praying against all evil in the name of Jesus we pray for those without the Holy Ghost Lord I pray that God will pour out your spirit upon them mighty God brother Joshua is here this morning I pray that God will touch him in a mighty way Lord Jesus I pray for his strength mighty God sister Narita oh God granddaughter this morning I pray that God will pour out your spirit and there are other children Lord Jesus in the sanctuary God 
that need your Holy Ghost this morning and this service designed for souls to be saved. I pray, God Almighty, for those on the line watching this morning. I pray right where they are, Lord Jesus. They will receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Mighty God, your hands are not too short. Where you cannot save, neither high ears are heavy. Where you cannot hear this morning, Jesus. I pray this morning that you pour out your spirit. Oh God, in the corner of this nation right now, in the name of Jesus, all our churches that is called by your name, Jesus. This is the time, Lord, when the Holy Ghost, mighty God, that is pouring out, oh God, in all the regions this morning. And so, God, we are looking to you, mighty God, for what you're about to do in this service, Lord Jesus. Mighty God, remember, Lord Jesus, the praise team this morning. Remember the moderator, Lord. Remember the musicians. Lord Jesus, remember the one that will come through the word, Lord God. I pray you strengthen such a one this morning. Oh, God, as he pour out his heart before you and preach the word to set the Lord in the name of Jesus Christ this morning. Somebody, Lord God, will get a word today. Somebody will be strengthened today, Jesus. Mighty God, as we leave everything in your hands. Mighty God, anything I fail of ask you today, Jesus. Fail not to grant it unto us, Lord. Remember our elderly this morning. Remember all the shutins this morning, Jesus. Oh God, extend your hands of mercy to them right where they are this morning, Lord. And breathe upon them, Jesus. Even those that should be in the sanctuary this morning, wherever they are this morning, Jesus. I pray that their heart will be at the place this morning. Oh Oh God, as I give you all the glory, mighty God, I give you all the praise. And Lord, I think we fail of ask you one more time, Lord. Fail not to grant it unto us as we tell you thanks in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, everybody. And hey. So this morning we'll be having our scripture reading and we'll be taken from St. John's 9 verses 1 to 11. I'm going to ask Sister Gabrielle to please read the scripture, St. John 9 verses 1 to 11. St. John 9 verse 1 to 11. Okay. And as Jesus passed by, he saw a man which was blind from his birth. And his disciples asked him, saying, Master, who did sin that this who did sin this man or his parents that he was born blind? Jesus answered, Neither hath this man sinned nor his parents, but that the works of God should be made manifest in him. I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. The night cometh when no man can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When he had thus spoken, he spat on the ground and made clay of the spittle, and he anointed the eyes of the blind man with the clay, and said unto him, Go, wash in the pool of Siloam, which is by interpretation sent. He went his way, therefore, and washed, and came seeing. The neighbors, therefore, and they which before had seen him, that he was blind, said, Is not this he that sat and begged? Some said that it is he. Others said he is like him, but he said, I am he. Therefore said they unto him, How were thine eyes opened? He answered and said, A man that is called Jesus made clay and anointed mine eyes and said unto me, Go to the pool of Siloam and wash. And I went and washed and I received a sight. Praise the name of Jesus. Thanks be to God. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. So this morning we're in our Mission Sunday service and our theme, it says, work while it stay, push with zeal. Work while it stay, push with zeal. Praise the Lord. So at this time we'll be turning our hymnals to Him 186, the breaking of the day. It is almost time for the Lord to come 
everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. I'm excited to be in the house of the Lord. Because in the presence of the Lord, there is liberty. Praise the Lord Jesus. So I just want to welcome you all this morning to Pentecostal Lighthouse. You could have been elsewhere, but you are you chose to be in the house of the Lord. Just want to welcome those of you online. We just want to welcome you all in the presence of the Lord. Just continue to worship the Lord. Praise the Lord, everybody, because you never know what the Lord will bestow upon us. And just want to welcome our missions director, Sister Dorinu. Williams in the presence of the Lord. Praise the Lord. Just continue to pray for the Williams family. Praise the Lord, everybody. And at this time, Sister Tina Shailing will be doing the announcement. Persons are encouraged to make donations to the construction of the sanctuary at 11 King Street. Donations should be made in a separate made payable in a separate envelope from the tithes and offering and labeled King Street Project. Checks should be made payable to Pentecostal Lighthouse. Please contact us for banking information to make direct transfers. And also, please don't forget to go to our YouTube channel, visit Subscribe, share, and like. All right. And our Zoom ID is 305017-71624. And our passcode is Pentlight, capital P, capital L. And you can also visit our YouTube page by typing in Pentecostal Lighthouse, and you'll see our page pop up. Don't forget vessels we encourage you to visit the pentecostal lighthouse youtube channel and then you're going to subscribe share and like everybody amen you may contact us by sending an email to pentlightupc at gmail.com or by phone or whatsapp at 1-876-781-9606 to be a part of our services or to speak with a minister or to arrange for personal Bible study, baptism in the name of Jesus, baby dedication, counseling, marriage, marriages, etc. Thanks for joining us for worship and the Lord Jesus Christ. Bless you.
everybody. And this time it's testimony time. Just going to ask the persons to come who are asked to testify. Praise the Lord Jesus. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. I was asked to testify about working for the Lord. You know, some people might consider cleaning the church just like normal. You know, some people might think that just cleaning the church is nothing. But to me, it's a blessing cleaning the church. You know, I remember the day, I think it was 2007 when Pastor Link passed. And um, he was passing up on the road and he stopped me. And he asked me if I was working and stuff like that. And, you know, he asked me to take care of mainly the outside for him. Because I don't know what had happened, so he wanted somebody to ensure that someone take care of the outside. But knowing me, I think that I should clean place. You know, I don't think I should just clean outside. So I started cleaning inside. I just take it up and I start cleaning inside. And, um, you know, persons who used to clean, stop clean. Because they said, Sister Valerie cleaning. But I didn't have a problem. I start cleaning. You know, and I remember cleaning church on a Saturday. You know, so till Winsome said to Sister Buckley one day, you can't help Valerie clean the church. And Sister Buckley just started help me clean the church. And I, you know, just cleaning the church, is, I, it's a privilege to clean the house of God. You know, because when I finish clean on a Saturday, and you see the chairs line out, and everything just speak and spang. It's, it's filling, it's, it's fulfilling for me. Yes, it's very fulfilling to see everything just clean. So when I clean on a Saturday, I don't want anybody to come in and mess it up. Because Sunday morning is supposed to be speak and span for people to come and see it clean. So I'm telling you, it's a privilege cleaning the church. I am happy cleaning the church because I don't know why I'm not trembling now. Because I don't like the up here business. You know, so whatever I can do for the Lord, yeah. I will satisfy doing it. So I don't mind cleaning the church. And I'm saying, cleaning the church, people, it's a blessing to clean the church. Some people might think cleaning is not a blessing. It's a blessing. Yeah. And I consider it a ministry. Yeah. I am working for God. Yeah. So church, just work for God in every way you can. You know, I know there are things for me to do. I know the Lord want me to, you know, but I am, <laughs> and I am, you know, but... I know the Lord has something for me to do. And I am just keep asking him, what is it? But, you know, me knowing myself, I don't like, I don't like certain things. But, you know, whatever God wants me to do, that is what I, I want to be obedient. So anything he tells me to do, I am going to do it, with, do it with the best of my ability. We will work for Jesus until... The shadows fall, labor for the master, give to him our all. In the duly evening, when the reapers meet, we shall come rejoice in bringing in the sheep. Can we just lift our hands and worship the Lord for just a brief moment? If God has been good to you, just worship Him. Just say something good to Him this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, everyone. I believe from the day you repent of your sins and baptize in Jesus' name, and you are filled with the Holy Ghost. You are a worker for Jesus. Amen? You are a candidate for Jesus. You know, I remember in the early days, you know, I used to work very close with Brother Drisdale. And I remember even while we were building the church, you know, I got a responsibility. I don't know, Brother Tyrell, I know that Brother Tyrell know this name. Brother Drisdale called me Keyman because what he did... He gave me the responsibility of having the keys for the church. I remember, if you look at the tiles, you see there is a different shade of color from there and down to the back there. I remember, 
when Pastor Stuart was going overseas, I don't know if you remember Sister Valerie, he wanted to come and view this section that was built from here to here. And I know he, he is a man of time. And when I woke up early in the morning and by the time I reached there and I come out by church, I saw a little light coming up the hill. When I looked, it was Pastor Stuart. And when he came to the door there, and I opened the door and he came in, he lifted his hands and when you look at his face, tears was coming down his face. Brethren, it's a privilege to work for the Lord. And one thing that really hit home when I looked at, I want, they wanted me to testify based on working for the Lord Jesus Christ. I don't want, after all these many years, I fool myself with the oath of the Lord, believe I'm working, but I'm nowhere with the Lord. That is a very conscious reality. If you, you can look at the story of Mary and Martha, we can busy all over singing at the choir, preaching and teaching, but at the end of the day, you lose it all. I don't want to be on the outer court. I want to be in the inner courts. So I see it as a privilege working for the Lord, not just giving an impression that I'm busy, like I'm doing something. Because I remember I preached some time ago and I told you about in a bee's hive, there is a queen bee. There is a worker bees that go out every morning. They collect pollen and nectar and they are the one that they use. Some, they regurgitate the thing that they take from the extract from the flowers to make the honey. But there is a bees in the hive that you call the lazy drone, brother Manning. Eat and sleep, that is the duty of that bees. But I don't want to fall in that category. I want to work for the Lord Jesus Christ until he comes. And brethren, no, it's not the time to ease up off of the pedal, brethren. We need to really sink the pedal right down because, brethren, when you look what is happening over the world, you know, I remember the touching message of Brother Stephen last week. Brother Stephen, even today that message still resonated in my spirit. When we look at what is happening over the world, what is saying to us that the Lord is coming very soon. And brethren... We don't want to be named that we are United Pentecostal Church, right? but when the trumpet is sown, we come like the five virgin that is foolish. We come knocking and say, let us in. And then we're going to reel out the resume and say, I have done this and I have done that in your name. And the Lord is going to say, depart from me. I know you not. I don't want to fall in that state, brethren. My desire and my hope is that mm, I will be saved. I don't want to be like those standing on the outside and say I once was. I want to be saved. That is the ultimate goal. I'm not going to boast and say I have been in church all many years and I have done this. I'm not going to boast in that. What's going to count for me is what the Lord said to me on that day when I meet him face to face. Well done. Good and faithful servant. So Lord... Thus aid me to be saved and remain saved. God bless you all as remain workers for the Lord in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, you know. So I remember um, uh, Wednesday night when I came to Bible um, studies and minister Manning. I just, from that night when he said this, I just always remember. Because we know Minister Money, well, for those of you who don't know, like Minister Money when driving a car, you know, or I should say driving his own car. So he was basically explaining to us that if he's driving his own car, that you just take him a shorter time or, you know, a very short time to reach where he's going. But if he should drive someone else's car, you know, he would, you know, take his time and be cautious because it's not his car. So I was looking at it just to say, you know, our body, this body doesn't belong to us. It belongs to the Lord. So we should be careful what we do with it, you know. And I just always remember it. I never, I never look at it that way until that night when he explained it. And it just, you know, stuck in my head. So we can't just do any anything because we will pay the penalty. Praise the Lord, everybody. Just a reminder. And as Sister Valerie was talking about cleaning his ministry, I remember 
when I was doing Bible survey, um, yeah, um, Pastor St. Jones basically gave us everybody assignment to go and to clean the toilets at church. So, but for me, that wasn't an issue because I would have done that before. I, you know, I wouldn't see at anything. So I remember our next church when I was saying, well, it's a lot of toilet that he has to clean because his church is a big church. But saying all of this to say that, you know, basically the exercise was to see if we could just humble ourselves. You know, many persons want to come up here and to preach and for people to see them and everything. But if we could just humble ourselves and our first assignment was to clean the toilet at church, you know? And as you say, cleaning church, it's a ministry. And, yeah, you know, I admire Sister Valerie and Sister Michelle and all those who clean the church. I used to help, but, you know, I feel bad because, yeah. But just want to encourage you all just to continue to work for the Lord. You know, sometimes you don't feel like doing it, but it's not for anybody. It is for your own good and it's unto the Lord. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Why won't you lift up your hands and praise the Lord? Praise Him for His mercy. Praise Him for His love. Sister Ennis, Dennis, to minister in song. Praise the Lord. Praise him for his mercies. Praise him for his love. Great is the Lord and ready to be praised. Why won't you lift up your hand and praise the Jesus. Let's praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. Praise God. You know, I just want to greet every, everybody, everyone, in the mighty name of Jesus, our soon coming King. For those who are online, we greet you in the name of Jesus. And, you know, I just want to welcome the presence of my, one of my co workers, Sheila McDermott, at the back there, visiting with us today. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God, praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus, we serve a mighty God. Praise God. There is peace and contentment in my Father's house today. Lots of food on the table. And no one is turned away. There is singing and laughter as the hours pass by. But a hush come the singing as the Father said. My house is full 
But my fear is empty. going to invite Minister Verona Dennis. She will be praying. Praise the Lord.
Praise the Lord Jesus. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Let's bow our heads. Praise the Lord. Oh Lord, our Lord, how excellent is your name in all the earth. We worship you, Lord. We adore you. We lift you up. Lord Jesus, hallelujah. Lord, thank you for your mercies towards us, Lord God. You have called us, Lord. You have called us for such a time as this, Lord God, into your house, Lord Jesus. Not only to sit, Lord God, Lord Jesus, but, but to worship you, to work for you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. And Lord, as I pray a prayer of commitment, Lord God, Lord Jesus, I praise God to your work. I pray, Lord Jesus, Father Lord, you said in your word, what you required of us, you said we must love just, we must do justly, love mercy, and walk humble in your sight. And this morning, Lord Jesus, hallelujah, help us to just heed to your word, Lord God. Help us to humble ourselves in front of you, Lord Jesus. Father, Lord God, hallelujah. So many of us, Lord Jesus, want to stay around the table and feast. And no one want to go out into your field and work. But Lord, hallelujah. Lord Jesus, our mouths are your mouth, Lord God, your mouth. Your hands, our hands are your hands, Lord God. And so, Lord Jesus, you we must work for you. It's a must, Lord God. We must be witnesses, Lord Jesus, for you. Father, Lord God, hallelujah. The children of Israel, Lord God, when they were in the wilderness, Lord. You gave different work, Lord God, for each one of the Levites, Lord God. Some was workers. Some was worshippers. And some was warriors, Lord. Some were warriors. And so this morning, hallelujah, you place us in the body, Lord Jesus, for different things, to do different things, Lord God, according to our ability, Lord Jesus. And this morning I pray, hallelujah, that, Lord, we'll commit ourselves one more time to your work, Lord Jesus. Father, Lord, we just want to sit back, Lord God. But, Lord, help us, Lord God. Just give us a burden for souls, Jesus. Because there are so many souls that are dying, Lord. Hallelujah. And going into sin, Jesus. To hell, God. But this morning, Lord Jesus, I pray. Lord God, help us everywhere we go, Lord Jesus. In the streets, in the lanes, Lord God. Help us, Jesus, hallelujah, to talk of your love. To talk, Lord God, of your goodness. To tell others about you, Lord Jesus. Father, Lord God, hallelujah. Lord, when you appear, Lord God, we don't want, Lord Jesus, to be like the five foolish virgins. Father, Lord, all ten virgins, Lord God, Come to church, Lord Jesus. Worship, hallelujah. Do everything the same way, God. But when the time, hallelujah, when the time was fulfilled, Lord Jesus. Oh, my God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Five went in, Lord God, and five was le were left, Lord Jesus. So this morning, God... Help us, Lord God, to be the five wise virgins, Lord God. Father, Lord Jesus, help us to work for you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Help us, Lord God, the things we used to do. Some of us are men pleasers, Lord Jesus. Love the limelight, Lord. Hallelujah. Love when men, Lord God, talk about us, that we are doing this and doing that. But Lord, help us, Lord God, not to be men pleasers, but to please you, Lord, in everything we do. Lord Jesus, 
Help us, Lord God, hallelujah. That our ways please you, Lord Jesus. Help us to humble ourselves before you and work while it's day. Because the night comes when no man can work, Lord Jesus. So, Lord God, hallelujah. As we come to you one more time, Lord God, we are asking you to forgive us, Lord. Help us to make a fresh commitment to you, Lord God, right now. Help us to work the way you want us to work. Hallelujah, Jesus. And Lord, in the end, Lord, we don't want to hear these seven words, Lord God. Depart from us. I knew you. Depart from me, I knew you not. We want to hear, well done, my faithful servant. Well done, hallelujah. And so, Lord Jesus, help us, Lord, hallelujah, to look to you, to work for you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for being good. Thank you. As we humble ourselves before you, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Do the work that is set for us. As I pray the name which is above every other name. The name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Praise God. Praise the Lord. I'm going to invite the praise team to come and minister in song. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Please worship with us while we minister in song. Like a ship sailing out on a trip so rough and long, so far from shore. So far from home, I set out in search of a reason to go on, and there I found it in the Like a ship sailing out on a trip so rough and long, so far from shore, so far from home. I said.
matter what storm we may be going through in our life, whether we are going through the storm of financial crisis, Jesus, whether we are going through the spiritual storm, hallelujah, 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 whether we are going through physical storms in our life, it doesn't matter the storm, once we trust Jesus, the light of our Savior will take us safely. My 
Shata. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. And at this time, we're going to invite Minister Manny to come and to share what the Lord has laid on his heart. Oh, glory be to God. Jesus. There's a song we sing often. Consume me, Lord. And I'm sure when we sing it, most if not all of us sing right along. Consume me, Lord. But before we sing it again, I'm just going to kind of help us to understand what we are saying. Because to consume means to totally absorb or to totally use up. So if your house is on fire, when the firemen get there, they may say it's, it was totally consumed by the flames. If you give me a bullet to take to someone, and when I get to the person, I say, you know, so-and-so gave me a bullet to give you, but I was hungry along the way, and I consumed it. I don't think the person would say, okay, still give me, because it's not going to be in a form that they would want. That's what consume mean. And if we are not prepared to be totally used of totally absorbed, by the Spirit of God, then really we have no right to sing that song. So let's sing it again. But if you have not been allowing yourself to be totally used of, totally absorbed by the Spirit of God, I would suggest that you repent before you join us. So let's try that again. Consume me, Lord, with the fire of your spirit. Consume me, Lord. Make me more.
going to have some one to stand at this time, if you are able. We're going to turn our Bibles to two passages of Scripture. We're going to read Psalm 69, verses 6 to 9. Then we're going to read John 2, 13 to 17. I read in your hearing Psalm 69, verses 6 to 9. Let not them that wait on thee, O Lord of hosts, be ashamed for my sake. Let not those that seek thee be confounded for my sake, O God of Israel. Because for thy sake I have borne reproach. Shame hath covered my face. I am become a stranger unto my brethren and an alien unto my mother's children. For... The zeal of thine house hath eaten me up, and the reproaches of them that reproach thee are fallen upon me. John 2, 13 to 17. And the Jews' Passover was at hand, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem and found in the temple those that sold oxen and sheep and doves and the changes of money sitting. And when he had made a scourge of small cords, he drove them all out of the temple and the sheep and the ox and poured out the changes money and overthrew the table. And said unto them that sold the doves, Take these things hence, make not my father's house and house of merchandise. And his disciples remembered that it was written, The zeal of thine house hath eaten me up. Jesus your promise that we would receive power when the Holy Ghost comes upon us and that we should be witnesses to you. Oh God, for those who have not yet received the baptism of your spirit but are waiting on it, my God, let this be the day that you pour out in good measure unto them. But for those of us who have so received, Lord Jesus, we first of all repent for all that we have failed to do that you required of us. We pray, O oh God, that like Jonah, you will give us another chance. And my God, we pray that your undergirding spirit will inspire us, will ignite us, will set us aflame for you that we may go out and be a light shining bright in a dark and evil world. Let your will be done. Speak to your servant. Speak through your servant that your people may be edified. Your name may be glorified. Your kingdom may be enlarged. We give you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. You may be seated. In St. John chapter 9 and verse 4, Jesus made a statement to his disciples. He said, I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. The night cometh when no man can work. And if I may just take a couple of minutes to kind of enlighten as to what exactly Jesus was saying. He was not talking about the 24-hour cycle of day and night that we as humans experience. David said in the psalm, the days of a man are three score years and ten. So in other words, our life cycle has a day and a night. And the night is not when we die. Because it said that by reason of strength they be fourscored, they are days of sorrows. In other words, there are some things that we need to do during the daylight hours of our lives that are going to be difficult to do 
if not impossible when those days are past. If I may use Brother Steve as an example, he plays a keyboard. And I'm sure when he was learning the keyboard, he'd be looking down at the keys and he'd be pong, 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 pong. Until he got it to the point where he can, without looking, he can close his eyes and worship and play fluently. When you have that kind of skill, if you were to put him in a room without light and say play, probably what he'd probably do is go up on the keyboard until he found the middle C. I said, okay, now I know where I am. And from he found that he'd be able to play because his experience would have taught him where every note lies in relation to that middle C. But if he were just learning, and you put him in that dark room. It will be chaos. What Jesus was saying. Is not that at some point. We are going to stop working. But you are going to find that. Those who don't work. While we have the daylight hours of our lives. Are going to find it difficult. To do so. In the night hours. Last week you heard the servant of God who told us. And while it was addressed more to the youth, I think I can broaden it that there are some who come to church to tick off boxes. You know, I remember years ago when we had a, a pent up, when we had street service, you know, like a week of service. And then Pastor Stewart would come and said, let me see those who came one night. Let me see those who came tonight and so on. But I know there were persons who turned up. And by the time the choir finished, they're leaving. But the pastor Stuart asked you, did you come on Wednesday? You can truthfully say, yes, I came on Wednesday. But were you there in an evangelistic mindset? Or were you just there to tick a box? It looks good when you just stand up in church and say, I came all five nights. But how many of the sermons did you hear? How many of the altar appeals did you support? And so when you talk about being consumed, the psalmist said, the zeal of God's house Hate up Jesus. The zeal of God has devoured him completely. The zeal of that house swallowed him up. Nothing was left. That's what it means to be eaten up, to be consumed. And I want to say on this October 2022 Mission Sunday that the church is waiting on a set of people who have been eaten up by the zeal of God. The church is waiting on a set of people who have been consumed with the fire of the Holy Ghost. The church is waiting on a set of people who have been devoured by the desire to see the advancement of the glory of God in the earth. Oh, bless the name of Jesus. Bless the name of Jesus. Oh, praise the name of Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus. Our attendance record will have little value if at the time of the test we have not studied the subject. We have not done the homework. So we are at school early every morning. My children are a case in point. Most of their classes are afternoon classes or late morning. But they have to be dropped off at school by someone who has to reach work by 8. And then after, 
because of how the geography she drops off those who are going to the university then she drops off the one who's going to high school and still has to reach work by eight so you have persons whose class start at 11 who are being dropped off at 6 30. and some of those have classes that end at nine and you're not going to make two trips so when you add up the hours they spend at school, it's far more than the actual instruction hours. But that will not matter. You're not going to go in an exam and say, listen, I came five hours early. I came six o'clock for 11 o'clock class. Or even though my class finished at three, I was here until 9.30. That's not going to work. Attendance is good and we want to see you come to church. But if you are just coming to church for the sake of being present in the sanctuary, you are wasting time. God wants you to be consumed by his desire to save mankind. God wants each and every one of us to see ourselves as nothing more than a match that can be used to kindle a fire. After you light the fire, you usually throw away the match. But if you have been successful in being used to light the fire, you have done God's will. Oh, bless the name of Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus. In 2 Corinthians 12, praise God. Paul said to the Corinthians, bless the name of Jesus. I am willing to spend and be spent. I want you to understand that Paul understood that his days on earth had a limit. He was not going to be here forever. But when he got to glory, he wanted Jesus to say, well done. And you're not going to hear well done if you have never done. I praise the name of Jesus. So he said, some of you don't like me. Some of you hate me. Some of you say, boy, that short man, his, his physical stature, he, 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 he's weak. His bodily presence is weak, but his words are weighty. Some of you talk behind my back. But if I'm using, if I'm being used by Jesus to reach you, I don't care what you say. Because the psalmist says, for thy sake, I have borne reproach. Shame has covered my faith. I am become a stranger unto my brethren and an alien unto my mother's children. But I'm willing to suffer because the zeal of thine host and eaten me up. Oh, praise the name of Jesus. I am willing to be hated by those whom I love. If by my work and by my, my ministry, I can bring someone to Jesus. I don't have to be the most popular person. I just want to be a light. Shining in the darkness for Jesus. I praise the name of Jesus. Most of you here would have grown up in the era of gas stove. So you wouldn't understand, but I'm going to explain to you. For those of us who come from the days when you have to have wood fire. This kind of weather is your enemy. Because when mom said go outside go chop of wood. The wood has more water than the drum. It's soaked. But you got to light it. If you want to get breakfast. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus. So you'd have to get the cold, damp wood and pack it. And you'll get some kindling. The kindling just as wet. But it's thinner so it's easier to ignite. And then you get some newspaper. Or you tear up them old flower bag. I don't know if you know when flour is coming up in a big paper bag. With about three or four layers. And then you... The match is cold. The box damp. And if you strike it too many times, 
it shines, the, 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 the sulfur of the stick comes off and the thing on the side of the box becomes shine. You have to become skilled at striking matches. So and when you strike the match, you can't move too fast. Because you move too fast, it way out. So you have to take your time and you set it until it starts to blaze. And then the paper starts blaze. But your work just start. So you have to get the piece of zinc fan. I wonder if too many of us, Sister Tina, are soaked logs. And Jesus has been fanning us. It's a good thing he's the omnipotent God or his hands will be tired by now for some of us. Because he has been putting the fire of the Holy Ghost in us for the past 10, 15, 20 years. And fanning and blowing and fanning and blowing and fanning and blowing and fanning and blowing. And he has put brambles. He has put like a pastor Lengs and a pastor Stewart. He has put brambles and they are blazed. But we saw cold and water love with cat. Consume me, Lord. Consume me, Jesus. Bring me to the point where the zeal of your house has eaten me up. There's a world out there waiting to be fed. But there's a fire that first needs to be lit. Oh, bless the name of Jesus. In Hebrews chapter 5, Verses 11 to 14, he said, I have fed you with milk. But when the time comes that you'd have been eating meat, I still have to be giving you milk. I still have to be giving you milk. When you should be the one heating up the pot, I still have to be heating you up. Consume me, Lord. With the fire of your spirit. This mission Sunday. God is calling for a people. Who are willing to throw themselves on the fire of the altar. And say God I am willing to be burnt up with power and zeal. For you and your cause. Bless the name of Jesus. Bless the name of Jesus. Bless the name of Jesus. In the book of Haggai, he spoke to the people. And this was the time when by the grace of God they had been brought back into the land. And God was now saying, okay, I brought you back. You need to rebuild. And he said, then came the word of the Lord by Haggai the prophet, saying, Is it time for you, O ye, to dwell in your seal houses, and this house lie waste? Now therefore, said the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. Ye have sown much, and bring in little. Ye eat, but ye have not enough. Ye drink, but ye are not filled with drink. Ye clothe you, but there is none warm. And he that earneth wages, earneth wages to put it into a bag with holes. So says the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. Go up to the mountain and bring wood and build the house. And I will take pleasure in it. And I will be glorified, said the Lord. Ye look for much. And lo, it came to little. And when he brought it home, I did blow upon it. Why, said the Lord of hosts, because of mine house that is ways. And he run every man unto his own house. 
Therefore the heaven over you is stayed from dew, and the earth is stayed from her fruit. And I call for a drought upon the land, and upon the mountain, and upon the corn, and upon the new wine, and upon the oil, and upon that which the ground bringeth forth, and upon men, and upon cattle, and upon all the labor of their hands. My house is full of people eating from my table. But who are the ones who are going to go out there and feed the multitude? The Bible said in the feeding of the 5,000, Jesus broke bread and gave it to the disciples. He didn't hand it out to the crowd. He gave it to the disciples. Jesus has given us the Holy Ghost. Jesus has given us power. Jesus has given us authority. Jesus has given us dominion and we sit on it and glory in our salvation while the world dies in sin. Consume me, Lord, with the fire of your spirit because his spirit was the spirit that said, I must work the works of him who sent me. I cannot be consumed by the spirit of Jesus if I'm not working the work for which Jesus sent me. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus. This world can burn for Jesus if the embers that have been lit in the house of God by the Holy Ghost be scattered abroad in the fields. Let me say that again. This world can burn with fire for Jesus. But it needs the embers that have been lit in his house by the Holy Ghost to be scattered abroad in the field. It needs men and women, boys and girls, who are prepared to be Christians when we leave these four walls. Who are prepared to speak like Christ and speak for Christ. Who are prepared to live like Christ and live for Christ. And who are prepared to die with Christ, for Christ, if needs be. I am willing, Paul said, to spend and be spent. I will hand my, make my resources available. And when that is finished, if you want to take me as well, go ahead. As long as I'm being used to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus. When you go to the book of Revelation, in speaking... To the churches of the, the church of the Laodiceans. He said, Thou says I am rich. And increase with goods. And have need of nothing. And knowest not thou. That thou art wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. Sister Gabby told us about her experience in going to youth core. And she was honest. To say to us that, one, she was, not, she was not at first enthusiastic about going. And even after volunteering, she kind of questioned whether or not she had made the right decision. She was honest. But then she was also honest in telling us that at the end of it all, she felt welcomed in welcome. She was glad she had gone. 
I'm not saying we're going to suddenly leap up and become a blazing inferno. All God wants is a little spark. He says, the smoking flax, he will not quench. But he said he will blow. The spirit of God wants a spark in some heart. Because if God is fanning and there is no spark, there will never be a fire. Consume me, Lord. Consume me, Lord. I know this may not be the nice jump up, clap on a run the aisle message. That's fine. That's fine. I don't think Paul enjoyed being stoned. I don't think John enjoyed being covered with burning oil. I don't think Peter enjoyed being crucified. I don't think James enjoyed being killed with a sword. But there's a joy awaiting them that will make the travails of this life disappear in an instant. Because one look upon the glory of Jesus in heaven will make every pain of life worthwhile. But I want to say to us that we don't have eternity. The night cometh. Some of us the night are much closer than we want to admit. Let me say that again. Some of us, the night is much closer than we want to admit. But the thing that we need to accept is that Jesus said the night cometh when no man can work. Work the works of him who sent us while it is day. Now, let me just look at the episode in John I read earlier. It was a Passover, John 2 verse 13 onward. It was a Passover. They were at Jerusalem. And under the law, that's what they were supposed to do. They were supposed to gather to the house where God had chosen to set his name. And they were to bring their offerings. In fact, the, under the law, God said, if the place where you live is too far, convert what you have to money. Go up and then buy what you need. But the Jews had turned this, the Pharisees had turned this into a commercial enterprise. And they were actually making profit of the faithfulness of the believers. So if you sold a cow for $1,000, down in Dan. By the time you got to Jerusalem, that thousand dollars could barely buy you a maga goat. Because they had hiked the prices. And the temple was now converted from a house of prayer and worship into nothing more than a supermarket. They had done the outward part of what was required but the internal motivation was lacking. The wood was there but the fire had gone out. Did you go up to Jerusalem for the Passover? Yes! Did you go to the temple? Yes! But if you had asked them, did you worship God? The way he said you ought to. No, we're too busy selling. And Jesus said, that's not going to work here. Get that out. Get that out. Get that out. Not everything, beloved, that comes into the temple of God is accepted by God. Not everything we bring into the house of God is worshiping God. Not everything we carry here is giving glory to Jesus. Some things we have to go out. And if we don't take them out, God is going to chase us. The Bible said he drove them all out of the temple. And the sheep. And the, say start with the people. Because it's not the sheep and the oxen were the problem. 
Because he had said in the law that they could bring them there and sell them, but not inside the temple. So he started by driving them out. Can I go back to my old time this fire analogy? There's a wood called Bagias wood. And under normal circumstances on a hot sunny day, Bagas wood don't blaze. If you get it damp and put fire near it, you kill every mosquito, every roach, every scalp, and every lizard. If you hang around, they kill you too. Because it's so, so smoke. And if you mix up bag of food in the fire, you try to catch it in the door, the rain will fall, and you have to lock the kitchen door. So the place don't get wet up, and it's all smoke. The only way to get up is to take it out and dash it away. I'm not going to say any of us are baggers. But just know that if we come inside with that spirit, we are hindering the flame. It's not going to be possible for Jesus to consume his church the way he wants to with that kind of material on the altar. We therefore have to ask Jesus to change us. Change our nature. The Bible says, be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. God can take the deadest piece of log that, that, that soak, but he can transform it. But it must be first filled with a desire to burn for him. Because God will work on the desires of our hearts. As long as we are willing and ready to be consumed by Jesus. Our abilities are immaterial. God will find a way to use us. But we must be first consumed. I surrender all to you. Except so and so. Everything I give to you, but not so and so. And then we come like Ananias and Sapphira, withholding nothing. You remember what happened to them? Let me say to you folks, and I'm closing. I remember the days when we look forward to Mission Sunday. Because Mission Sunday was not any ordinary Sunday. Mission Sunday. Sunday school was transformed into a worship service. And people received the Holy Ghost in Sunday school and Mission Sunday. Mission Sunday. The night service was as full as, if not more, fu uh, if it fu more fuller or fuller, we were still going to school, than the morning service. Mission Sunday. People, the ladies make sure they didn't wear ears because you know Pastor Stewart is likely to transform it into a street service without notice. Mission Sunday. You had to bring in your workers' book with all the names of the people that you have spoken to during the week because you are likely to be asked. Mission Sunday. The prayer room was full from about 6.30. Because persons were consumed with the fire of Jesus. The spirit of the Lord was upon them. Jesus. 
But something has changed. Something has changed. We have become waterlogged. Our search for the things of this world has diverted our attention from the things of God. And our energies now are being expended trying to accumulate worldly treasures. And the treasures of souls that will stand in the presence of God and not be consumed by moth or rust or have thieves breaking and steal. The treasures of life saved for Jesus is no longer appealing because it lacks earthly commercial value. But I'm praying for our people. I'm praying for our people, including myself, where we can truly say, as the psalmist prophesied, and as the disciples testified of Jesus, the zeal of thine house has eaten me up. Burning, burning, burning for Jesus. A flame with the power of the Holy Ghost. And I would to God that today be the beginning of those days. God bless you. In Jesus' name. Consume me, Lord, with the fire of your spirit. As you open the altars. Consume me, Lord. Make me more like you. Break me and mend the broken pieces of my life. I want to be. take this opportunity to just encourage everyone to come to the altar we're going to be praying this is a time that we have where just for a few minutes to just repent to the Lord and recommit ourselves present our bodies as a living sacrifice unto him we thank the Lord for his words and we thank the Lord for his grace and his mercy upon, it, upon us. Because it's, it's just because of the Lord's mercies why we are not consumed. And so we're going to be praying at this time. And Lord, we thank you. What an awesome God you are. 
Nothing good that we have done, mighty God. We don't deserve your love. We don't deserve the sacrifice that you did. When you suffered and died on Calvary's cross just for us to be saved. But we thank you. We thank you for this great love that you have for us. In that while we were yet sinners, you died for us. Thank you for this precious day that you have blessed us with. Such a fitting topic for a mission Sunday. Oh God, to refresh our memories, Lord, of our true purpose as a church is to be a light to shine in this dark world. So that this dying world will see that there is a saving God, a loving God, a forgiving God. This morning we repent as we stand before you. We repent, mighty God, of our sins. We repent of our slothfulness, Jesus. Slothful in your business. Help us to be fervent in spirit in serving you, mighty God. Forgive us this morning. Every single one of us, including myself. Forgive me, Jesus. It's our desire, Lord, to live for you. Help us, Lord Jesus, not to leave behind an unfinished task. Look beyond our faults even right now, Jesus. Look beyond our faults, mighty God. Have mercy. I know you have been having mercy on us continually. But we beg for more mercy, Jesus. We seek more of your mercy, Jesus. We seek for more of your compassion and your grace towards us. Jesus. Cast not your spirit away from us. Take not thy Holy Spirit from us, Jesus. Do not cast us out of your presence, Lord. Because we need to be saved. From above all else, mighty God, we must be saved. So pass us not Oh, gentle Savior, but just hear our humble cry. And if we're not humble standing before you, bring conviction upon our hearts even right now. Conviction to repent before you and to humble ourselves before you. Thank you, Jesus. The night comes when no man can work. So help us to give you our best and our all while it is day. Oh God, we have fallen short with the zeal to work for you. I remember when I was studying, Lord, I came to church. I left in my church clothes. I went to school. And I left school and I came back to church in the night. 
Help me, Jesus, to have that great zeal for you. That it's not about us, God. It's all about you. Because it's only what's done for Christ will last. Nowadays we have to be pushing so hard to come into your house. Oh God, nowadays we get so carefree. Oh God, more of wanting to be online rather than being in your house. In your house. That's where I always want to be. I remember when Sister Natisha was very ill, Lord God. She came into your house and you touched her. You healed her, mighty God. So that now she keeps coming continually, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for your compassion upon us there and you every morning. None of us are worthy to stand even at your altar this morning. None of us are worthy, Jesus, to even reach out to you in prayer. None of us are worthy. But you have been so good to us. Help us to recommit ourselves, God. We heard Sister Valerie testify this morning. It's a privilege. It's a privilege to clean your sanctuary. She feels good to come on a Sunday morning and to see the sanctuary speak and span ready for us to come in. Many of us at times we come and we complain about the house of God, but we don't make ourselves available to assist in keeping this place speak and span. Many of us complain of the same persons being used and that is because we make ourselves not available for the work of God and so it's just the few that are faithful and devoted that have to continually be used because many don't make themselves available to the work of God and so none of us are worthy to stand in your house this morning. All of us have fallen short. Touch us this morning, mighty God, that we recommit ourselves to you. It's not just singing the song to consume. Many times we sing these songs, but we, we lie. Because deep in our hearts, we don't dedicate and commit to what we say with our mouths. So forgive us, Jesus. Sometimes because we don't want to be left out and nobody to know that our spiritual lives are nowhere. And so we try to fit in and we lie. To the Holy Ghost when we know that our spiritual lives are nowhere. But I thank you that even though you are a God of, you are the same God yesterday, today and forever. Mighty God, if it was in those days, in the olden days, none of us would leave the sanctuary alive. Our bodies would have been pulled out of the sanctuary. But you are such a loving, great, and wonderful God. Here are your children, mighty God. 
Souls are at your altar, not yet filled with the Holy Ghost. Help us not to be complacent each time we get into this house and just see it as a norm. But Jesus, help us to really push in prayer for these children on their behalf to be saved. We see what is happening in the schools. We see what is happening in the communities. We see what is happening in this world. Our children need to be saved. Community members need to be saved. Our families need to be saved. Oh, Jesus, what this world needs is you. Help us to give you our almighty God. Help us to give you our all without murmuring or complaining. Help us to receive your words with readiness of heart and thanksgiving in our heart. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. O oh God, bless us even right now. Bless us even right now, Jesus. Hallelujah. Bless us even right now. Bless us even right now, mighty God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I'm going to ask you at this time. With your right hands raised. Reading from the book of Hebrews chapter 10. Chapter 4 verse 10 to 11. That's our benediction. Hebrews 4. Reading from verse 10 to 11. Thank you, Jesus. For he that is entered into his rest, he also hath seized from his own works as God did from his. Let us labor, therefore, to enter into that rest, lest any man fall after the same example of unbelief. Praise the Lord. The Lord bless you.